in a small town. I had just graduated high school, and so you might say I was quite naive of the ways of the world. And I had just met an acquaintance, and her name was Linda. Now, I don't remember anything else about Linda other than that she had told me about this office job. But it was in downtown Tulsa. <laughs> so my cousin Pat was familiar with the area, so she offered to drive me. Now, some of you may not remember this, but this was back in the day when you could just show up and ask for an application. You didn't have to have an appointment. You didn't do it online. So, Pat being eight years my senior, often took the role of older sister. And so as we're driving to this interview, she's coaching me. And she's telling me that she wants me to use the word initiative. Tell them that you came on your own initiative. Now practice this, she said. Say it over and over, over and over. So I was going, initiative, initiative, initiative. So we arrive, and I remember that it's just across the tracks on Boston. And I remember it being a brick story, single story building, and it had a single door that welcomed me. So I entered this door. And immediately to my right is the receptionist. So I bravely walk up and I say, are you accepting applications? And she promptly hands me an application without comment and I fill it out. I hand it back and almost immediately this old man kind of shuffles around the corner. And he invites me into his office. And as I enter the office, I remember looking in this desk is huge, it's enormous, and it just makes him look more small and fragile in stature. But I sit down, and he shuffles around, and he sits down. And he looks at me, and he warmly says to me, well, what brings you in today, young lady? And I immediately, I perk up, my heart starts to beat, I can feel myself smiling, I get a twinkle in my eye, and I say, why, sir, I came on my own initiative. Now, I don't remember anything else about that job interview other than that I got the job. <laughs> so it's my first day on the job, and it's Polly, the accountant, who has taken me around, and she's introducing me to everyone. Now, Polly, she achieved average height by her four-inch heels. I remember she had on a pencil skirt that just accentuated her muscular calves, and her face was kind of framed with soft curls and wavy hair. Mm, think of Mrs. Howiggins. <laughs> but I could tell that I liked her, okay? She was warm, friendly, I liked her laugh. And she invited me out to lunch. So we're having lunch, and I look at Polly and I said, Polly, I didn't see Linda. Where's Linda? And she kind of looks at me confused, and she said, Linda? We don't have the Linda here. And I promptly looked at her, and I said, yes, you do. Linda's the one that told me about the job. She works at L.A. Key. Polly laughs, and she pats me on the hand, and she says, oh, honey. She said, you don't work for L.A. King. You work for Born Incorporated. L.A. King is next door. <laughs> So I leave you with the question, was I lost or was I found? Right. <laughs>